This year marks the 246th anniversary of the United States Postal Inspection Service. Join us for a virtual tour at the Smithsonian National Postal Museum. It all started on August 7, 1775, when Benjamin Franklin appointed the first surveyor, the forerunner of today's postal inspector. Hi, and welcome to Behind the Badge, the National Postal Museum's exhibit on the United States Postal Inspection Service, the first and oldest federal law enforcement agency. I'm Carol Harris, Postal Inspector, and with me is everyone's favorite docent, retired Postal Inspector, Dan Mahalko. All right, Carol, let's do it. Let's go. So Carol, a lot of people don't know who postal inspectors are or what they do. What types of crimes do postal inspectors investigate? They investigate over 200 different types of federal laws. That includes mail fraud, assaults and threats on postal employees, mail theft, post office robberies and burglaries, identity theft, counterfeit money orders and stamps, and money laundering, child exploitation through the mail, mail containing dangerous materials, and a huge part of our focus right now is drug trafficking and getting the legal narcotics out of the mail. So how busy are postal inspectors, Carol? It's a great question, Dan. They're incredibly busy. They support and protect a network across the entire nation that includes over 600,000 employees, over 150 million delivery points, on average adding over a million new delivery points every year, over 30,000 facilities. We're investigating and responding to criminal activity across that entire landscape. Dan, as you know, postal inspectors investigate and are on the forefront of investigating mail fraud. But we have a special focus, and that's consumer fraud. What can you tell us about consumer fraud? Yeah, consumer protection is such an important area for postal inspectors. It's one thing to go and investigate a case and arrest the bad guys, but we like to prevent people from becoming victims of mail fraud, particularly consumer fraud. Here's one of my favorites, uh, sports memorabilia fraud. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And in this particular case, someone was selling game-worn jerseys, only they weren't worn by the star. They were just right off the rack. So people got ripped off on that. Another favorite of mine is old Smiling Bob. He was an advertiser for male enhancement pills. They didn't work. And then, of course, we have the good old misrepresentations. For example, you won a prize. You won a stereo. What a great prize. Yeah, but look how small it is. <laughs> You know, it's five inches wide. Or you want this five-piece luggage set, all wrapped up in this nylon and it's so thin you can push your fingers through it. These are misrepresentations. We don't want people to get ripped off, so that's why postal inspectors investigate so many consumer fraud cases. So, Kara, how do postal inspectors start an investigation? Great question, Dan. What they're going to do is they're going to collect evidence. They're going to use that and they're going to identify suspects. Once they've gathered evidence, identified suspects, they'll work together with our National Forensic Laboratory and they'll develop a fact pattern that they can then take to the U.S. Attorney's Office. Dan, over the years we've been known as the silent service, but our stories have been told on the big screen and on television. Can you tell us a little about that? You know, Carol, our first venture into movie making was in 1936. The title of the show was Postal Inspector. <laughs> it starred Bela Lugosi, who was, of course, of Count Dracula fame. But over the years, we've done a lot more. We've had the 1951 Appointment with Danger series. And then we had the Inspectors, Showtime movies in 1998 and in 2000, starring Lou Gossett Jr. and Jonathan Silverman. And I'm in it. I kind of stole the show from Lou Gossett. Good to know. Well, Carol, now we're walking into an area called the vault. It was part of the post office vault when this was the Washington, D.C. post office. This was way too expensive to remove, so now it's part of our exhibit. So, Dan, now we're here in the vault, and vaults represent protecting money, and there's money in the mail, and we have to protect that as postal inspectors. The cases highlighted here represent and capture some of our stories from over the years. Here we have the Doe Tremont Brothers case. It's a famous train robbery case from 1923. And here, a famous highway robbery case, and that goes back all the way to 1962. And just behind you here, the Jack in the Box case from 1980, where someone hid inside of an airplane to steal mail. And last here, we have a case that involved a mail theft that was covered up by a fire in Loretta, Virginia in 1997. So, Carol, you mentioned about protecting the mail and protecting the money. This is one of the great protectors. 
Back in the 1920s, there was a rash of mail train robberies. So postal inspectors became the first government agents to be issued the famous Tommy gun, the Thompson submachine gun. In the 1930s, the inspection service was responsible for guarding and protecting the billions of dollars in gold bars that were moved from the Federal Reserve in New York City to Fort Knox. Carol, now we're walking into a gallery that highlights a lot of the high-profile investigations we've done over the years, starting with that famous guy. Absolutely, Dan. We worked a case on Charles Ponzi, who's pictured here. His name is synonymous with a scheme where you take money from new investors to pay off old investors. And over here, we have something you would be familiar with, Dan. That's right, Carol. This was a billion-dollar art fraud ring that operated out of uh, New York, but it covered the whole world. They produced counterfeit art prints by famous artists such as Salvador Dali, Pablo Picasso, Chagall, Miro. They sold these things as great investments for $25,000, $35,000, but they were worth about $75. Yeah. And here's another major case that you probably heard about. This is the Unabomber case. Ted Kaczynski, he was a guy that mailed and placed bombs from the period of 1978 to the time we arrested him in 1996. Postal inspectors were part of a task force of FBI agents and ATF agents, and these are the cuffs that were put on Ted Kaczynski when he was arrested. And Carol, moving from the Unabomber, this display case shows items that were used to mail illegal narcotics. That's right, Dan. Just about anything you can imagine has been used to attempt to conceal narcotics that are being placed into the mail. But postal inspectors are very smart about these concealment methods, and just a handful of them are on display here at the Smithsonian. Carol, the terrorist attacks of September 11th were followed by anthrax mailings. And here we have one of the actual letters that was sent to the senator up on Capitol Hill that contained anthrax. And two postal employees died as a result of touching this anthrax. It's a very complicated and complex investigation and postal inspectors, FBI agents, and uh, ATF were involved in this long-term investigation. As we see right here, this is the box where the anthrax mailings were made. It's all dusted and fingerprinted. Also, as you can see, we had to change the way we operated as a result of something so hazardous like this going through the mail. That's right, Dan. We learned a lot through this investigation, and we've adapted how we operate to create our modern dangerous mail investigations program to protect not only our employees, but also the public at large from dangerous substances in the mail. Carol, postal inspectors do a lot more than just investigating, don't they? They absolutely do, Dan. They respond and operate in austere and at times hostile environments, whether that be a hurricane or a flood or after a terrorist attack. You can see imagery from all of those types of instances here at the National Postal Museum. And what those postal inspectors do when they respond to these environments is that they bring back a sense of normalcy. They help assure that America's communications and commerce once again are visibly flowing through the streets, bringing back that warm comfort that our society needs when they see the Postal Service operating. A key part of what we do is preventing crimes. We'd much rather prevent a crime than have to solve it. One of the ways we do that is through our Uniform Security Force, our postal police officers who serve at our facilities. And that concludes our tour today of the Behind the Badge exhibit. So if you're in Washington, D.C., come to the Smithsonian National Postal Museum. And if you can't make it, visit postalmuseum.si.edu. Check out our website, uspis.gov, for more information on the Postal Inspection Service.